Our next guest sees investing opportunities not only in Magnificent Seven companies, but in Chinese tech stocks as well. For more, let's bring in Dan Niles. He's founder and senior portfolio manager at Satori Funds. Uh, Dan, thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, what, let's st start with a broad look at the tech sector. What do you think of this remarkable rally uh, in the NASDAQ 100 that has extended uh, so far this month, so far into 2024? Well, I think if you look at the broad markets, it's easy to see the rally extend further. And that's really driven by the Federal Reserve. They've made it pretty clear. And Jerome Powell said this back on December 13th. He said, the reason you wouldn't wait to cut rates is that it would be too late if you waited for inflation to get to 2%. So it seems as though there's a probably a 50-50 chance that you have rate cuts that start in March. There's an old saying, don't fight the Fed. And in that environment, tech stocks should continue to do well. The thing that concerns me is the back half of the year, you could end up with you know, delayed reaction to monetary policy. As people talk about, it works with long and variable lags. And if you do end up with a recession in the back half of the year, then you could see the markets really sell off. So strong first half, weak back half. That's kind of what I'm thinking right now. So, Dan, do you go into a period like this long, uh, maybe leveraged? I don't know how you run your, your fund, but do you go into this long with the intention of shifting to a neutral or even short bias at some stage? And what would, what would the trigger be for you to do that uh, over the next sort of three to six months? Sure. I mean, I really don't have a long-term view in the sense that I manage the I manage my portfolio on a day-to-day -day basis. And so to your point, I watch data as it comes in. So the GDP report yesterday, obviously coming in at 3%, whereas the prior uh, quarter it was at 5%. That 3% was higher than people were looking for for two. And so that gives you more confidence that you are ending up in a soft landing scenario and the market should remain strong. From a day-by-day -day basis, I look at weekly jobless claims a lot. You can't get a recession without a lot of uh, job losses. And right now, you've got about 40% more job openings than people unemployed. So that, again, would speak to a soft landing in the near term. And I watch oil prices, energy prices, quite a bit because that has a big influence on inflation and consumer spending power. Obviously, what's happening in um, the Middle East in terms of shipping, that's going to be inflation coming through the pipeline because if you've got to avoid shipping through certain areas of the Red Sea, that's going to make things more expensive. And so that's something that you have to watch out for for the back half of the year. Okay, one stock uh, you like and own in, uh, in your fund is Amazon.com. Why so? Well, I think with all companies over the longer term, Earnings is what drives stock prices. Short term, it doesn't really matter. It's multiples, right? But if you look at Amazon, they're having a big potential surge in profitability because they built a lot of capacity during COVID. Then e-commerce demand slowed down tremendously as we all went out and did things. And so they had all this excess capacity. Now they're starting to fill it. We see EPS being able to double from calendar 23 to calendar 25. And in about three days on January 29th, they're going to start showing ads to all of their prime members. This is 60% operating margin business relative to the company average of about 8%. So that's hugely accretive and that's going to help you for the rest of this year. So that's why we like Amazon. And even if you do get a recession, they're a share gainer during a recession. So it gives you a little bit of defense with offense, which is what I'm looking for in all my picks. Okay. And another you like is Meta Platforms, the company, of course, behind Facebook. Absolutely, because you know whether you get a recession or not, we're going to get an election in the United States. And there's going to be an incredible amount of money spent on this election. And that's going to really help add pricing for them. In addition, they have a very good AI play because they're using artificial intelligence to help monetize ads, make more money, and also to figure out what ads and content you want to see. And so between those two things, they're doing quite well. And you have sort of a sleeper potential in the Ray-Ban glasses at 300 and change that they're introducing. I think they're a much better value, obviously, than Apple at 3,500. Um, and they look like ski goggles, what Apple's trying to sell you. And so that, by the end of the year, when they have some advancements and they work in some AI technology into that, that could be an interesting end of year play for the merger between AI and um, augmented reality. 
Dan, I was really interested in your notes in the, the uh, attention that you're paying to China and to the tax sector there. Talk, talk just a little bit about how you would evaluate that and the opportunity that you see there because it's fascinating in terms of what's available potentially. Yeah, I mean, make no mistake, this is the riskiest of all the ideas, but which, remember, we run a hedged portfolio, so we've got a lot of shorts in there as well. When you look at China, the thing that's interesting there is actions speak louder than words. And so starting in November of 2020, the Chinese government went brutally after all their tech companies, starting with the blocking of the Ant Financial IPO by Alibaba. And that's been punishment for three years. And so if you look at the most recognizable stocks there, which is Baidu, Alibaba, Tencent, called BAT, their version of Fang, I guess. Um, the revenues, despite this, have grown 33% over the last three years. But the stocks have gone down 53%. So you've got valuations for all of these companies now, if you look at those three, sitting at about a 12 PE. You compare that to the Magnificent Seven, where you've got a PE of about 34 times, that looks interesting. More importantly, the government seems like now with these stocks just getting absolutely crushed and unemployment, especially youth unemployment over 20 percent, they know they need to start worrying about jobs and creation of jobs. And so they're backing off some of those policies. They've stepped in to buy some of these stocks themselves. Um, so that to me speaks a lot. And the fact that Jack Ma, who was at the epicenter of this problem back when the financial IPO was blocked, he and the chairman of Alibaba, they bought over $200 million worth of that stock. They probably know more about what's going on in China than any of us. That's probably a pretty good sign as well. And so that's why it's the riskiest, but it's also got the most upside if you just get a little bit of let up from you know uh, persecution of these companies to just monitoring of these companies. Okay, great conversation. Just before we go, we spoke about Amazon.com and we spoke about uh, meta platforms. Just in terms of disclosure, you own them obviously in the fund on behalf of uh, clients. Uh, do you or your family members own uh, either of those stocks? Yeah, we, we own everything we just talked about, uh, including K 